Now, somewhere along the line, I kind of got the reputation of being a little bit of a water cooling snob. I don't really think that's true at all. All right, maybe it's just a little true. So to try and break out of that mold, I'm gonna go ahead and feature my test rig right here in a video where we're gonna throw in an all-in-one water cooling unit, the Cooler Master Nepton 280L. I'm not above this. Hell no. You better not blow up my rig. Now Cooler Master obviously knows I'm a little bit of a cooling snob. So they said, why don't you go ahead and take our 280L and take it for a test spin. So they sent this bad boy over and that's what we're gonna do today. Now as you can see, this is a factory sealed box. So this isn't gonna be one of those, I've already taken it out and played with it. I, the cooler that is. We are gonna find out together on camera for the first time exactly what my impressions are of this Nepton 280L. So let's go ahead and talk about the features real quick before we get inside. Now it is maintenance free. So this is not like the 240 Glacier where you can expand it, open it up, drain it and all that stuff. It is maintenance free, you don't open it. You open it up, you void your warranty. It's got two times the surface area because it's, well, I guess two times the surface area of the 140. And it's got durable FEP tubing. So it's kind of ribbed, you know, for your PC's pleasure and you can bend it around however you want. So, extreme cooling performance, dual JetFlow 140 fans, and I've, I've played around with the JetFlows, and oh my god, do they move a lot of air. Like, a lot. Now for CPU sockets, it'll fit on pretty much any CPU on the market. And then as you can see right here, they've got some dimensions and some cooling graphs and stuff. Now I don't really care about their cooling graph, I care about my experiences with it. Open it up, here it is right here. Now. I do like the way the packaging is. I like the way that everything is, you know, kind of ready to go out of the box. Here's the radiator, and my goodness, it is a pretty good size, if you ask me. There, we get that out of there. Here is that radiator. This is a pretty good size radiator. I like this. Now, the pump in the block is one integrated unit. Make sure you take off that plastic piece before you put it on there. I'm, I'm not embarrassed to say that I've done that before, where I put it on with the plastic cooling on there. Probably way more times than I should have. But here's our tubing, it's nice and big, and like I said, it's nice and ribbed. And the fittings on here do rotate. That's the thing I really do like, is they do rotate. But you can rotate it off to the sides, that way you can pretty much take as much torque off the tubing uh, as possible. You know, you don't want to torque the tubing even though it is pretty durable. So there's the radiator right there. We are gonna be mounting this into the top of my Fractal Arc XL for this review. Here are those dual 140 millimeter jet flow fans right here. The cable on here is sleeved. It is a four pin PWM cable. And these, these fans do move an awful lot of air. In fact, these are rated to over 2000 RPM. So I definitely recommend you hook it up to a PWM signal. That way you can control the speed of these fans because my goodness, do these things sound like a jet when they're flowing. Do you see what I did there? Now that kind of brings me to the next point. Cooler Master does not have proprietary software for controlling their fans in their all-in-one units. So compared to some other brands on the market, that may be a little bit of a downside, but I've yet to find a motherboard where I couldn't actually control a PWM fan. So with that said, that's not gonna be an issue. Oh, and also too, the pump is PWM controlled, so you can speed up and slow down the pump based on the load of your CPU. So it's got a lot of automatic control in there. So here's all your hardware right here. It does have everything for AMD and Intel, all your old and new socket sets. What I'm trying to get out of here, if I can, is the PWM fan splitter. Thank you for including this. This is huge because I have, even on my M power board here, I have two CPU fan slots for PWM, CPU one, CPU two, and if I got two fans and a pump, I, uh, I kind of lose control over something. So you can hook this up to like CPU two, it splits off to both your fans, you can control it through your motherboard, and then your CPU one can control your pump or vice versa, however you want to set it up. I know this is all great talking about what's in the box and talking about specs and stuff, but there's only one way you can really see how well this thing works, and we are gonna hook it up to the god awful, horribly hot 4770K. That's right, we're gonna see how well this thing cools the 4770K while overclocked, because we all know 4770Ks have been known to bring a lot of all-in-one coolers right to their knees, and not in a good way.
So the Cooler Master Nepton 280L, how does it do? Well, first things first, I just want to let you know that my 4770K was a perfect chip for this cooler because it is an absolute f***ing dud. It does not like to overclock, and if I want to push it anywhere at all above its factory turbo spec, I have to pump a lot of voltage into it. So I thought, that is the perfect scenario for testing this cooler. Let's just pump a ton of voltage into a chip that likes to get hot and has thermal interface material issues straight from the factory and let's see how this cooler can handle it. Now right now I'm running my chip at 4.4 gigahertz but it's taking 1.29 volts to do it. Now if you guys know anything about Intel overclocking at all you know that running 1.3 volts on a chip is definitely a lot of voltage and it can really push your temperatures up to the ceiling really really fast. In fact on the Empower motherboard if you plug in 1.3 volts manually the font turns red to basically tell you hey buddy hope you've enjoyed your chip while it's lasted you're about to melt it to the ground. Now when it comes to temperatures, it pretty much spends most of its time during these stress tests bouncing around the low 70s and the upper 60s, but it can get up into the 80s depending on which algorithm it's throwing at the CPU at that time. But don't worry about those temperatures, under general use you're never going to leave the 50s or the 60s. These stress tests are designed to take your CPU and hammer the shit out of them. In fact, the little animation when you turn on OCCT is a couple of guys taking sledgehammers to a CPU exactly what these things are doing. They're throwing redundant calculations at the CPUs and absolutely positively maxing out every capability of the CPU at the same time. So that's why these tests get really hot sometimes. And that's why they're perfect tests for coolers like this. So guys, the Nepton 280L, it's a fantastic cooler. In fact, I've got a Nepton that's cooling my APU build. And I love the white glow around the logo on the CPU. The only thing I think would make that better was if it was an RGB. Maybe you could change the colors. I would change it to red currently for this build or maybe even yellow or something like that. And I think that's really the only criticism I have about this is that the LED should be able to change colors. But that's just me. You know, some of the other brands do that. I think maybe this one should as well. But the price is right, the cooling is right, the functionality is right, it's got all the things I love in a CPU cooler. I'm a huge fan of the fact that the 280 millimeter radiator supports both 140 and 120 millimeter fans. That way if you have 120 fans you prefer to use or maybe your case doesn't support two 140 mils, but you can fit the radiator in it, you could use 120 millimeter fans to mount it. So it just gives you a little bit extra compatibility and versatility. So this summer if you guys are looking for a way to keep your CPU from catching fire, you should definitely have the Nepton series on your shortlist. It's available in a couple of different sizes. In fact, a Computex, they even talked about new versions of this cooler coming out soon. We'll definitely be taking a look at that here on this channel. Got to give a huge thank you to Cooler Master for sending me this cooler to look at and test for you guys. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video and it helps you make a decision when it comes to buying a cooler for your computer. Now one last thing I want to mention. If you haven't noticed, this video is only available in 720p. That's because I'm trying out YouTube's brand new 60 frames per second function to see how well you guys like it. Would you guys rather have 1080p video at 30 frames per second or would you rather have 720p video at 60 frames per second? Unfortunately, my camera's not capable of doing 1080p at 60 frames per second. I am in the market for a new camera, so maybe in the future I'll be able to do 1080 at 60 frames. But for now, you guys have a choice. Which one do you like? Head over to Twitter to tell me. I'm probably not going to be able to see all the comments here on YouTube. Head over to Twitter. It's at Jay's Two Cents. Pretty easy to find me. It's the same for Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff. And tell me if you guys want 720 at 60 or 1080 at 30. So guys, I'm going to get the heck on out of here. As always, I'll see you in the next one. At least I hope so. Unless you've unsubbed and then you're not watching this anyway. So... I guess, uh, I guess I will see you in the next one. Whatever. <laughs>